Well, welcome to the Friday Bubble. We're very lucky there's been a, a run of releases of Magnums recently, um, so I can't stop smiling. And uh, Bollinger RD 2007 was released, oh, quite some time ago now. It probably must be over a year ago. But the Magnum is only just out. And um, Essie, uh, we go to Bollinger quite a lot because um, they're always very generous in sharing information there. Yeah. Um, but the interesting thing with RD, how did that, where did it come from? Where did that concept? So in essence, it is the, um, the RD, uh, RD is the La Grande Année uh, matured longer on the lease. So it's the same wine? Same wine, but the sugar level is a little bit lower because of the, the, the longer aging on the lease. Right. So the idea was that, you know, uh, Lily Bollinger, um, who was really the powerhouse um, uh, at the Maison, um, he, she loved showing um, older vintages to her guests, but right. how she loved showing them was directly from the sellers. Okay. Disgorged a la vole, just uh, uh, at the dinner. And she wanted to share that with the wine lovers, with the Bollinger lover, lovers, who uh, are obviously a very, very um, a specific group of, of um, uh, champagne consumers because Bollinger style is uh, very much of a wine, it's a really gastronomic. Uh -huh. Uh, style and she um, she wanted to create this wine uh, for the first time in 1952. Okay. And then, um, but what I find was quite remarkable, but already then for the first vintage, which was released in 1967, she put the disgorgement date on the label. Okay. How how far ahead of her time was she? Because not even now everyone is doing right. that. So I think that was um, extraordinary, but. Quite after when uh, when she retired, um, then uh, the next um, next um, uh, management team decided to put it on the back label. Right. It was good that they still kept it, but you know they uh, they wanted to hide it because it was clearly uh, very Technical. exactly and disturbing yes. and needed a lot of explanation. That's yeah. that's uh, really easy to understand. But it, it's really nice that now it's making a comeback to the yeah. front label. It's wonderful. So with this new label, it's really clear that it, as, as he said, it's just nice to have the, the information right up front. So here we go. Bollinger's obviously um, in the village of I, which is famous for its Pinot Noir. And on this blend, it's 66% and 34% um, is Chardonnay. Because it's all barrel fermented, you get this, well, you can just smell it. You get these complexities, don't you? Layers, layers of of fruit and then layers of the what we're going to call some oak um, mm. flavors that yeah it's it's um it's an interesting vintage for this one because mm -hmm. um uh, there was a shortage of of, of these rds mm -hmm. for boulanger um in the early 2000s because you know they didn't do this five right. and they didn't do the six right because of the vintage character yeah. so there was a long wait for the 07 From and it's quite seven. a it's quite a surprising vintage because you know it's um it's really was a tough year especially for Pinot Noir. Uh -huh. Some excellent Chardonnays were being made, so it was quite surprising to see um, this one being made. And I'd say that it's quite unusual in style because right. of that. So it really shows that fine Chardonnay fruit of the year, uh, and yeah. they did a lot of a very very tough selecting for for the Pinot Noir here, mm -hmm. and it's one of the very rare, I think one of two if I remember correctly, vintages where they have more Verzenay fruit mm -hmm. than I. Mm -hmm. So in that year, that sort of which had its uh, weather challenges, uh, Verzenay excelled and they found the, the material that they wanted from there. So therefore the style, because of the high acidity of, of 07 overall, and a lot of Chardonnay and a lot of um, Verzenay Pinot Noir, it's particularly driven and this sort of bit more leaner, fresher um, in style. There's, a, there's an amazing array of fruit in this, because I'm picking up, you know, I do get the, I, I wouldn't have expected something that's 66 Pinot to have had so much Chardonnay character. Because there's a sort of there's like a layer in there that mm. really adds to the the sort of mid palate weight. Because mm -hmm. that's when I get all that. Well, I'm going to say it again. I get all that rich pineapple-y mm. spiciness, and then there's all this orange character that's sort of built around it. Yeah, and today I'm getting a, a little bit of uh, Christmas spices as well. Yes, uh, and that sort of uh, orange peel and, yeah. and this uh, very very um, delicious, quite gourmand. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm immediately thinking something truffly to go with mm. this one. 
are you the chef for lunch today? Because I'm looking forward to um, <laughs> do a glass of this with something, a bit of pasta and a bit of truffle. Yeah, luckily I travelled with truffles from Finland. So, <laughs> so, so that, that's... What a beautiful of, acidity. The, the, the acidity, I was about to ask you, because yeah. was 07 a sort of classic year for low high medium acidity or it's high overall so high. high overall yeah and uh, and then because of the chardonnay being the only variety that really performed well it, it's even more amplified right. in the wines yes yeah, so i'm actually quite i'm actually really grateful that the chardonnay shines a bit mm -hmm. i think it there's that i think it plays really nicely on the mm -hmm. palette um very nice very, very, very shall we see um, <laughs> shall we see what the magnum does I'm not pouring it very elegantly today, but there we go. So this was disgorged um, the 17th of November, 2021. So just literally just over a year. Um, we're recording this in December, 22. Oh, wow, what a wow. beautiful nose. Mm. Isn't that... Um, mm, it shows, you know, some of the beautiful evolution elements than this, but then you have the magnum effect that sort of reductive toastiness on top of it, and a bit more cooler restraint. Very elegant, very The reductive seductive. toast is amazing in this. In fact, I think for a, for a magnum with Bollinger, I think it's more than I normally normally get. Wow. Seductive, isn't it? That sort of... Um... Very beautiful. Now the Chardonnay behind that seems to be shining. Mm -hmm. Let me taste. Mm. Wow, well, I'm not spitting that one. Mm. Um, hasn't that changed the, the palette feel? Yeah, yeah, they're quite different. I, I get this feeling of more, this is more, it's actually quite um, a bit like still wine, like that it has the bubbles and in, in, they're very fine and yes. in a very small roll. On the palette, I get this honey toned fruit. The fruit seems more intense somehow. The orange, um, the young orange, um, the sort of like a kumquat orange seems to be quite a bear. It's almost a little bit crunchy orange in the background. Beautiful lemon and grapefruit and mm. how different. Oh, I just can't get enough of the nose. It's gorgeous. It is, isn't it? Wow. And it doesn't seem, I've, we've got to sort of talk about dosage again. I guess something else has happened in the Magnum that makes it seem not as dry. Mm. The dosage sort of um, somehow, assuming they're roughly the same dosage. It, it's a bit lower for the Magnum. It's a bit lower. And it's, it's uh, you don't see that at all. It's, it's a richness in the, maybe the longer these aging. Such length to the wine, it's beautiful. Very clean, precise finish, lovely. The fascinating thing is we're seeing the journey. So, you know, this will follow this to some extent, mm -hmm. much, much slower, because um, you're getting all the dried fruits in mm -hmm. here, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So when you go back to that, you've got that real toasty chocolate, actually some chocolate coming out that's rather attractive in there. Um, but here, the intensity of the fruit, I, I'm even picking up some, some of those tropical sort of almost lychee notes in this as well today. I'm having a bit of a chocolate fest today, I see, because I'm picking yeah. it up in the Magnum as well. Is it, is it something that you're seeing? Yeah, I think, I think yeah, even, even white chocolate is very beautiful. Right. I like it a lot. Amazing now, but you know, this give this a few extra years and it'll be even more amazing. It's stunning. So today we've been surprised, not only by the bottle, but the magnum is exactly. the magnum is layers upon layers of, of more um, yumminess. I'm just going to call it, <laughs> and uh, beautiful lightness because we we sometimes think you know Bollinger can be heavy, but that's not at all what we're seeing. Um, I think it's got a, a delicacy actually, uh, especially oh, the magnum. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I think I love Bollinger overall in Magnum. It's just perfect for my personal taste that you get that extra kick of um, reductive toast to it. And it's beautiful. Brilliant. Well, go on. Um, your glass, bottle or the Magnum? Can I have both? No. <laughs> Cheers. Magnum. Thank you again, Essie. And um, happy Friday, everybody.